Uh, just stop me if you've heard this one before. You've put a lot of time into taking pictures or starting projects, right? And once you've gone back through your history or pictures or, or whatever, it's an absolutely cluttered mess. Half the files are missing or changed, and you just don't know where you've gone wrong. If you want to avoid the situation before it happens, well, we've made this video for you. Whether you store precious memories or use cloud storage for your work, what you want has some crossover. And you want someone to emphatically say that this is the best cloud storage provider, only they would replace this with an actual cloud storage provider. Now below, you're gonna be learning about six of those providers, how they work for you in your personal life and how they can help you more in a professional capacity. So the providers that we'll be looking at today will be Dropbox sitting at the bottom, number six, OneDrive, which we rank at number five, Google Drive ranking at number four, Ice Drive, which holds the solid number three slot, Sync, which is just behind pCloud at number two, and pCloud, which is the best overall provider for, well, basically everyone. And we'll be rating these providers based on security and privacy, personal and business features, storage and speed, and pricing and value. Now, unlike all the other videos we do, we're going to be looking at the worst product first, gradually improving as we go along. And just by the way, hey, you can get special discounts up to 80% on pretty much all of the products that we'll be covering in this video using the links provided where? Yes, in the description box below. So let's get started with our first stop, OneDrive. OneDrive is Microsoft's cloud storage solution. And you would expect some great things because OneDrive is backed by a pretty big company. And to be truthful, OneDrive does deliver. It works across all major platforms, that is Android, iOS, and of course, Windows. OneDrive also has an app on the Mac Store, although with a rating of just three stars and issues ranging from corruption to crashing, it just isn't the first choice for Apple users. OneDrive enables users to store, share, and access their files between these devices. It provides information on your file versioning history, including who made the changes. Among features, well, it's got plenty for both business and personal use. Its primary focus is the integration with Microsoft 365, meaning Word, Excel, PowerPoint. It also works with Teams, making it ideal for project collaboration, or even just catching up with some friends. Of course, given Microsoft's habit of advertising Teams too much, customers would probably be more comfortable using a string in a can out of spite. Its unique tools include Editor, a simpler grammar editor than what comes with Word, ClipChamp, a simple video editing software, Exchange, a professional email system, SharePoint, a professional file sarong system, Access, a way to share databases and apps, and Publisher, a way to share professional layouts and designs. All of these are fine in their own right, but very situational. But let us know what's your favorite among these apps. Switching to storage, well, it ranges from 100 gigabyte to six terabytes for personal users, Business users get one terabyte or unlimited with no in-between. Microsoft's business plans feel like well, meeting someone for a first date and then just immediately jumping to planning matching grave sites. They're also all fairly fast, but nothing too impressive. On value, OneDrive starts inexpensive, starting at $20 for 100 gigs for a year, which isn't great. Personal plans can cost as much as $100 per year, with the most expensive plan being six terabytes split between six people. Microsoft assumes that no person needs more than one terabyte of space, which works for most average people. Unless, of course, you have a secret stash of 4K cat videos. <laughs> Who, me? <laughs> no. Now, the business plans cost anywhere from $5 per user per month to $12.50. But the ClipChamp and Editor are limited to their personal plans, which is disappointing. OneDrive's biggest issue comes back to privacy, which, well, it has none. It actively sells your data to third-party advertisers for money. But thankfully, it defends you from other parties with the help of Microsoft Defender. <laughs> hey, woohoo! Microsoft is setting itself up to be the mafia when it comes to information. Of course, they would be the business in this case. Uh, confusing things. Confusing. Uh, hmm. corporate. How do you think corporate would feel if, for the sake of argument, someone threw a brick through your window? They've got like 10,000 stores in North America. I don't think they fill anything. Speaking of extortion, let's talk about Google, shall we? 
Now, Google has a similar track record on privacy to Microsoft. So, in other words, they take your data, sell it to the highest bidder, and that bidder uses it to send you direct ads. And companies like Google remind us why we invest in VPNs and consider services like privacy mail. Oh, uh, about privacy? If you want more privacy-focused content, give this video a like and subscribe. We spend a lot of time on VPNs and other privacy topics, and if you want to see more, hey, it would help us out. And still on privacy, Google One has a VPN. What? Now, yes, I know what you might be thinking, and you're right, <laughs> but it does come with Google One, part of their cloud storage offering. Now, for personal users, Google also offers services for monitoring the dark web, uh, simple editing tools for your Google Photos, uh, only for Android phone users, and woo, discounts in their overpriced store. <laughs> they also offer a decent desktop app, but it does have some issues automatically syncing. Personal users also get access to Google's equivalent to 365, and that's Docs, Sheets, and Slides. Business users, they get an idea sharing and generating whiteboard called Jamboard, an organization and note-taking platform called Keep, and their site building and built-in form platform for gathering data. Oh, you also get Meet with access to up to 500 viewers on Google servers. On cost, the entry-level plan costs $20 for 30 gigs, which is awful, but plans go up to five terabytes, meaning that you can pay for a decent chunk. Business plans do the same, but on a per-user basis, costing up to $18. Google's similar to Microsoft regarding upload and download speeds for these prices. So for personal users, Expect a lot of flexibility without much value. But for business users, yeah, pretty solid. Since the Docs programs are free, regardless of whether you pay for storage or not, the value of paying for Google Drive goes way down. Our next major provider is Dropbox, and it's simultaneously one of the best and one of the worst cloud storage providers on the market. Now, let me explain. <laughs> Starting with the positive, here we go. On the positive side, Dropbox is known for its clean interface and functional apps across all fronts. Their Windows app, it's better than Google's, and their Android app is better than OneDrive's. And Dropbox, they support all the primary file sharing and storage features that you would expect for personal storage. It has a simple activity tracker that makes it easy to determine who screwed up your files. Now, like all the major providers, it also includes automatic backup and syncing. And whoa, Dropbox has a truckload of features, including, well, a screen capturing software, a media player for videos, a PDF scanner, a password manager, an e-signing tool, a huge number of integrations that include Microsoft 365, G Suite, Adobe, and, and just more, more things than I have fingers and that I have to breathe to mention. <sighs> Calm down. Now, with the bad news. Dropbox has decided to build its security out of paper mache and glue. Yeah, the company's most recent snafu was back in 2017 as hackers gained access to its code repositories. Before that, Dropbox exposed the data of nearly 70 million users. Oh, did I mention that they have a password manager? <laughs> Which makes Dropbox the jackass of password managers. <laughs> Dropbox also has a concerning privacy policy, clarifying that they can take your data and give it to third parties. Now, they aren't known for selling ads, but they can still do whatever they want with what you give them. And this brings us to their storage, and it's pretty hefty at two terabytes and up. The family plan, well, that's the only decent value as pricing is a minimum of $10 per month. And like other cloud storage providers, it also has per user business plans, which are more expensive than average, because well, you see it's a company that well, only does cloud storage. So, upload and download speeds are really fast. Ultimately, if it weren't for the history of data leaks, Dropbox would be higher on this list. But hey, you let us know in the comments, is there any way that Dropbox can redeem itself? Compared to all the providers on this list, Ice Drive just doesn't have the same clout. But since we aren't reviewing Instagram influencers, hey, who cares? Now, Ice Drive overcomes the clout by focusing on simplicity and security. The simplicity part rarely comes through when looking at their apps, which work across all major platforms. The company, they use AES-256 security. It's the gold standard for hiding data used by militaries and secure organizations. It also uses zero-knowledge security, which means that even those who work for the company cannot access your data. And this security applies to all files that you can put into the encrypted folder. Regarding features, 
Now, iStrive focuses mostly on security, making it light compared to most providers. It does allow you to share your files by providing expiration dates and timers to limit access. So, companies and individuals mostly concerned with security will want to consider iStrive as they've had no data breaches. If you are mostly concerned with integrations, well, our next cloud storage provider might be more your speed. Now, regarding storage, iStrive's plans range from 150 gigs to 10 terabytes. And regardless of your chosen size, the speed is incredibly fast given the lightweight nature of the apps and servers. iStrive's lifetime plans are known to be slower, but hey, that's the nature of lifetime storage. If you want to learn why lifetime storage needs to be slower, go and check out our video on the value of lifetime storage right here. Lifetime storage has excellent value, but it can cost up to $1,200 on time, which can be steep. Now, you can also pay 150 gigs of storage for $20, so yeah, iStrive is reasonable. If you want hefty discounts for iStrive, we have a special link for you in the video description. Now, if you want something that takes a bit of inspiration from Dropbox, but has the security of iStrive, hey, why not consider Sync? It's an excellent tool for first-time storage users with amazing integration features. But the interface just doesn't do the tool justice, so keep that in mind. However, the desktop and the mobile apps, they're passable. The features include integrations with Microsoft 365, Adobe Acrobat, Google Drive, Slack, and others. You will need to pay money to access any of these, which might disappoint some. For those who run a business, Sync is selective in its usefulness. The Slack integration replaces what you might get with Microsoft Teams or Google Meet. Uh, well, it's also better than Teams or Meet, so there's that. Sync also integrates with Adobe's creative suite of products, making it ideal for collaborating with creators. Sync, it isn't as ideal for business as Google or Microsoft's products. I mean, after all, you don't get video sharing and editing software. Instead, Sync focuses on its security software, which is virtually identical to what you get through iStrive, meaning zero knowledge encryption, regardless of where you store or send your files. Sync is geared toward high-end consumers, starting at one terabyte of storage and eventually leading to unlimited storage. Now, despite the high-end storage, Sync does have some reported slowdowns. It isn't the fastest horse in the race, probably because it's tired of carrying all those integrations. The premium level storage also is priced below Dropbox, but it's higher than most, and you'll end up paying anywhere from $8 to $20 for personal plans and $6 to $15 per user per month for business plans. If you split it with someone, you can get Sync's best plan for $15 per month, which is excellent for unlimited storage. Now, Sync's biggest problem is its web app interface. It looks a bit dated. Now, the desktop interface looks somewhat dated, but the mobile interface is professional. Like iStrive, you can find a sweet limited time discount of 30% for Sync in our video description. Now, in our full review of pCloud, which you can find here, you'll find out how much this software rules. But it might not fit everyone, right? Starting with the interface, pCloud keeps things simple. The web app, desktop, and mobile apps are all easy to look at and navigate. Our experience with pCloud tells us that they prioritize security. Much like Sync and iStrive, pCloud doesn't sell your data to third parties, thank you, and has the same security that you've come to expect from all these smaller providers. But its zero-knowledge encryption does require you to pay a bit extra. They call this software pCloud Crypto, which is a one-time payment offer of $150. Now look, we know that that extra cost might just bum you out, but pCloud is still the best regarding security and privacy. Why? Because it lets you move your US-based servers into the UK, protecting them under the UK's data protection laws. And let's be honest, UK's data privacy laws are much better than the US's non-existent data privacy laws. <laughs> yes. Ooh, the freedom to have your identity processed by a company. That's true freedom. Now, when digging into the features, pCloud provides the same file sharing features as all the major providers. And this includes automatic backup and syncing, sharing links to files with expiration dates, and requiring passwords to access those files. Like other smaller providers, its integrations, unfortunately, are the weakest part. It does provide a unique feature to back up data from other providers like Google, Microsoft, and Dropbox. So you could use limited free storage with Google, which still includes docs and access the higher security and backup potential of pCloud. Now this makes it usable for project collaborators, but it does require a bit more setup to make it work. 
but it can be done. Its more helpful personal feature is the built-in media player, which lets you stream audio and video and create music playlists. The only issue is that these streamed objects cannot be protected by their zero-knowledge security because well, that kind of security style doesn't allow streaming. pCloud is also a premium service, starting at 500 gigs and going up to 10 terabytes. Its annual pricing is between $50 and $100, uh, the $100 giving you 2 terabytes. Lifetime plans range from $200 to $1,500, not including the extra cost of pCloud crypto. So, look, it is less cost-effective, but pCloud has more experience in the cloud storage environment to back up this extra cost. Of course, if you want to make that cost more cost-effective, you can get up to 80% off of pCloud using our limited-time discount link in the description below. Now, whether you use these cloud storage systems for your business or your personal use, all of them are solid. But if we had to choose, well, hey, pCloud, hands down, is the best overall cloud storage provider. Of course, we do have other cloud storage reviews that you can go and check out, including the ones that you don't have to pay for. So here is our look at free cloud storage providers. If you like the content, please just take just a couple of seconds, a few clicks to go and like and subscribe to our video. We truly appreciate your time. And it is with your continued support that we can continue to make content. So thank you so much for watching. And hey, I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Bye-bye for now.